I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> So moved. Thank you. <laughs> so moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Anybody here for community spirit? <laughs> okay. Old business. I'm tired of bringing it up, but now we have to follow it up now. The accreditation so. is stationary. That's the what accreditation I'm will not go forward until we go forward. Okay. Um, it's just, so, it's impossible, impossible. Then I'm going to take it off, unless anybody objects, I'm going to take it off the agenda because I understand what the chief's saying mm -hmm. is at a, a point where it's not going to go forward and there's no point in us asking it every month, you know, when he gets ready. Mm -hmm. You know, after But we took it off before, right? We took it off before, but we reached the point where we were supposed to come back on, man. And that's why, if you recall last month, I didn't want to get hit. I got it. You know, I got when it. When it was due. Yeah, what I would, what, the only thing I would say is we're, we're only a couple policies shy. The main policy that talks about awards and an award program is one that really has to take a lot of thought and accuracy to uh, to complete it properly, and uh, and then there's a couple other ones, you know. But most of the policies, although we're not accredited, we are following the standards set by the state. So although we don't have the certificate, um, most of our policies are up to par and up to date, and you know. But to be accredited, there's the follow-up, there's the evaluation and there's every single standard that needs to be in place. And like I said, the awards one, uh, which it, it's important for us in-house. Um, <coughs> however, it's not something, you know, for operations in our community and stuff. So most okay. of the Yeah, no, I just, you know, like I said, this yep. was the day I, I went last month, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't give, you know, I just figured it ask. We'll take it off the agenda for, you know, another three, four months. Okay. Or unless something comes up that you want to report. Something's up, I'll report to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, new business. Unless somebody else has some old business they want to add. Okay. Uh, can somebody make a motion to accept the minutes of August 9th? She can't see you waving your finger. <laughs> <laughs> second. Get a second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We get a motion to accept this meeting minutes of the special meeting of August 15th. So moved. Yes. Second. Steve. Second. Thank you. It's like pulling teeth. All those in favor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, it's it's something important. Jeez. And can we get a motion to accept the minutes for the special meeting of so the 23rd? Moved. We were busy last month there. I'm trying to remember. You mean a second? Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Next time do it on bonk and then we just hit. <laughs> Okay. Go through it. Okay, uh, monthly report. Hello. Hello. Just in time for the end of the meeting. <laughs> Two minutes? <laughs> it's seven or three. How about that? I just came from the farm. No, he's not <laughs> kidding. <laughs> he's not kidding. Uh, anybody got anything on the monthly report? Any questions that you want to ask the chief? Anybody? I love what? Questions. Well, the only thing that maybe uh, you, you want to discuss is you want to discuss. I gave you a printout. Yeah. Um, uh, Commissioner Margolis had requested um, a printout of calls in town, village, different areas because everything's broken down by a zone. Um, there are approximately, I think, 30 some zones. Um, in the process of attempting to do this, I did. Uh, one and a half days, which was three pages. Um, and this, uh, if we're looking at doing the breakdown, the program will continue to freeze up unless I do it by the day. Oh, one if I do more than one zone, more than 15 days, it locks up. So and what we would end up having is a stack of paper like this uh, by the time I'm done with it, and it's gonna be one day at a time. So I just think that maybe we want to consider trying to figure something else out in order to get this report. Well, 
as I said to you, Chief, I have been calling that computer company, yeah. but they don't return my call. Um, and, it, and it's a pain in the neck because this is very important information, particularly in what's going on with the village, you know, and, and what's going on with the bid, and what's going on with everything else. Yep. Um, again, that's, that's the reason why important. I printed this out is this is one day's worth. Um, so if we went to do 365 days, and then um, I have to comp I have to do have what to, the computer what right. I want the computer, and then to do. you'd have to go through and, and break down the town, village, and the codes. Um, again, I, I think that it would be a, a lot of paper, a lot of information that really is not going to give you exactly what you're looking for easy enough. Maybe, maybe I ought to re maybe I, I should just do a request of the bar zone. I mean, that, that, they're in their own special zone, per se, give or take a uh, bar or two. Uh, you know, that, that's the heavy business this district in the village. Uh, it's just that, uh, you know, I wanted to get a fair comparison, but uh, maybe Chief, because then we're talking only 12 reports. And the 12 reports, to break those 12 reports down into my computer, it's going to be the same people over and over again. So maybe if you could give it to me that way. Well, we can. I can look at. It. I can try to print it out yeah. uh, the village codes and see. Yeah. But um, you know, just say, okay. again, I printed out the one day just to show Is you what we're going to be looking at. I'm sorry. Is it in the packet? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have. Believe it or not, I forgot. Well, you only picked it up today, right? Yeah. Not only that, but I was not the last one to pick it up. Was surprised. Yeah. If I recall, I was requested to have it done a week in advance, and I noticed they're not getting picked up to the day before or no, the day of. Excuse this me. Time, this time, no, that was me. no, not mine, just you. mine. Have picked up the usually mine have picked up the day or the next day. You tell me they're ready because I have to do my work on it. Problem is, is that the misinformation I got, I stopped doing that work because uh, you know the, the whole report when I was given the wrong spent a year doing that report, and I'll be very honest, and then it turned out that the information they gave me was wrong. I'm not interested in spending that kind of time. I have a quick question for you. Do you keep data on how many different, I don't know if jurisdictions is the right word, or types of departments respond to a scene? I was just curious. We don't, the only way we, the only type of information we have in our case, you'd have to open up the case and see if okay. it says assisted by whatever agency. Okay. Um, if we assist another agency, we have an assist code in there that we can do assist you know how many assists we've done okay. um, but for them assisting us it's our case so they'd just be listening to the narrative okay. so you have to read the narrative and see you know who's here okay uh, Garrett, the, the software company that you said you're, you're calling yep. is that the same group that we've been dealing with yes the same group that every time when does their contract expire uh, every year we have a uh, a license agreement with them uh, and you, you know, bring that to us. And stuff. It doesn't usually come. It's usually budgeted. Uh, we actually have not paid that um, because they've been working with us, and they know that we've been not happy with the way they've been updating their programs. So uh, they've waived the fee over the last couple of years. Wow. Well, I I think we should start looking for another mm -hmm. company, and I and and I would I would move that that. The, the commission instruct you to do so. I thought the commission was going to take do a study and check with other agencies. <laughs> no, and no, no, no. Well, I, I was liking it. You know, I mean, I, I, I think you should. I mean, we should be able to get what it is that we need from them, and they're not responsive. And I mean, we've been asking <clears throat> about this stuff on the software for a year and a half, yeah. and they're not returning calls. So. I think we should move to, to look for another company. supplier so they can provide us the type of information and data that we need and we appreciate the fact that they haven't mm -hmm. been charging us for whatever. Is but that the same company that provides you tech support? So if something goes for down, the, software. the hardware goes down? Just oh. for the software only. Oh. This is a, uh, a prog software program that we have for our case management. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good program when it works. Mm. However, there's a lot of things in here that we've asked for over the years. Um, the problem initially, they said, was that it was so customized mm -hmm. that they couldn't give us the updates that uh, would keep us up to par with everybody else. Um, so we kind of went back to not being so custom, because mm -hmm. that's when it first came out in 1999. Wow. Um, but you know, when you talk about a new management system, mm -hmm. you're still talking $20,000, $30,000 for that program. Um, what, is, what is the cost that we pay them annually now? 
I believe it's twenty four hundred dollars. I believe a month. Yeah. No, no, a year. A year. Twenty four hundred dollars a, a year. Yes. That's no wonder for we're updates getting. and no wonder. Yeah, they, no they, wonder. The well, we is. bought the program. The program's ours. Well, you know, is ours licensed to us, and it's what we've used since nineteen ninety nine. So they're just supposed to respond for assistance. They're supposed to re respond for assistance. Any updates that come across, because we're not the only one with this program. So how do you get Different. support for like server support and, and other technical server support? supports and things like that? We use the town's oh. IT people. You know, what I've been asking for really is really quite simple. They have the source code. We don't. We mm -hmm. have the source code. I have plenty of people who could do this mm -hmm. without actually having to get it, get the information because it's, you know, it's ones to zeros, no mm -hmm. big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can't tell me they have nobody there who can do, you know, who can look at the source code and make those changes. Now, again, I don't know this program and look at the source code, but we're talking any computer program that you can't make a little change to when you have the source code that just says add up column A and add up column B, I got a problem with. Well, I, I seriously, I would move that we instruct the chief to look for a, a different software company to that, that can give us the kind of information, information we need that to we make need intelligent and, decisions and satisfy his needs because I mean a year and a half of this is is and yeah the money is 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 good but I mean if we're not getting what we need and they're not being responsive then you know we can't do our jobs and um, you know mm -hmm. we've been at this for a year and a half two years and it's it's insane it's insane I mean we were we met last year and they were supposed to get back to us September the 13th <clears throat> That date came and went. Uh, they said they were going to come back to us, and that date came and went. You've been working with them individually, and because they said they couldn't do anything, so I got myself involved. Because I mean, I do know a little bit about this kind of stuff. I do write a massive manufacturing program. So, so. I made the motion. If it's there's a second, I mean, you know, you. All right, I'm waiting for a second. Steve. Huh? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll check with okay. Olive first and see what kind of program they're using. Yeah. Check with who? You could. Olive. <laughs> we have our own Olive. Olive. IT guy. Olive. <laughs> Olive. Can, can I, can I can ask loan a question? Us. Certainly. Okay. So I know we had talked about that there was something in particular that you were looking for that you wanted to see. Originally. And we talked about it and it seemed that it was customized and they wanted to charge you a lot of money to do that. So, if you were, since you're going to investigate another program, do you know of another agency that already, another police agency that already gets the kind of information that I was looking for? No, uh, nothing local. I know there is a place that we looked at. Georgia was it originally? No, it was in it was in Texas, but that was the the weird thing about that software. It had. It was actually pretty good, but basically what they were doing is they were charging us to mine our data for us instead of giving us the ability to mine it. Yeah. And what we want is the ability to mine the data that's in their system so that we can do what we want to do with it. But what we look, it was it was some small, it wasn't small, it was, it was, uh, it was some place in Texas. God, I forgot. Georgetown, Texas. Georgetown? It was Georgetown, <laughs> Texas. That's what I was saying in Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, it was Georgetown, yeah, Texas. We're, and we're not asking a, for, I'm sorry, hmm? we're not asking for any major change in the program. We just want a minor added to it so that the chief can go in and say, okay, I had four officers down at this bar and, and they got there at 8 and they left at the 8.30 and it cost us Y amount of dollars. And we also need this thing because of what the town board is doing. It was also helpful. I mean, I can't work with a thousand pages because it won't mine more than one page of data at a time for the other thing that, that we need, which is like Looney Tunes. All right, which is you just said that if you were to run the the thing for this, it would be running all That's day. That's one day is three this, pages, and right, it keeps locking days, up because of the amount of information. One day, three pages. So 36 zones with three pages, at least for 365 days. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not minding that data. I mean, it's, it's important yeah, data. It sounds labor intensive. Yeah, but, and, it, um, and it is very important data. So, so I don't think if, if we pay 
24 $2,600 a year. That's just for support and updates. That's it's it. basically just for updates. So we paid for the software back in 99. Right. That's 13 years old now. Okay, now I realize that we're pretty much used to hanging on to our stuff for longer than that. But the to purchase another program is going to be costly. Um, since we are in the budget process, um, could you get that cost to me rather than implementing it into your budget? That's oh, what I I'm don't, yeah. No, I, I don't think we asked I him do to not. do that. No, I, think, I think when we asked, yeah. I, any I extra think expense we asked, into yeah. my budget. Yeah, no, I no. think what we did. No way. <laughs> not to come up with numbers that maybe yes, the town the answer to your pay differently. You misunderstand. <laughs> I have an idea. Oh, okay. good, I like ideas. So I need the numbers. When, as soon as you can find them, um, because a preliminary budget is due at the end of the month, you probably won't have one by then, but before the budget's adopted, I, I have enough. Yeah, well, that's all we're doing is gathering. Yeah, I, I will see if yeah, what other agencies are using anything different. I'll check with some of the local PDs and I'll expand okay, out. Okay, but there is a catch. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have to give you both my sons? Do your hard work? I don't know. No, no. no, I got kids. I don't need any. Tomorrow. <laughs> you need it tomorrow. No. Um, either it has to already perform the function that Ira wants. So it's got to be apples to apples. Or what you're going to end up doing is purchasing a new software, and you're going to be in the same bind. And you're going to say, well, how do I get it to mine this data? And they're going to say, well, now we need another $7,000 for customized software. That's not the place I want you to be in. Right. But if it's potentially, and this is just a Jingaluchi opinion, does not reflect the opinion of any other member of the board. If it's a $30,000 investment, but no, you know, extra yeah. for customized if you're looking at it that way, that's very different than if you're looking at buying new software and then, mm -hmm. oh, it doesn't do everything now, we're looking at customization. That's right. why you're adding on to the you, what, what I'm looking that's to do the difference. is when I did the software program in manufacturing, what, what I did is I took something similar to the chief. We bought and paid for the source code. I had the source code. Uh -huh. It's ours, we paid for it. And there were people out there, like the person who helped me, who can read that source code, and you tell them, hey, you know, I want to add a, I want to do this kind of mining, and they can come in and they take that source code and amend it with a little, you know, code of their own, a uh, little blue, a little blur program, and that's what I'm looking to. I'm not looking to to go out and spend a hundred thousand okay. dollars and create new database. I'm looking for a company that can take our software. So are you saying you're looking for an outside Anybody. company that can s extract? Your data and can put a, mine, a mining program, thing. right? Can well can put a mining program in, so you, you know, similar to Excel, where you can mine for yeah. whatever data you want. Well, you can do that on major programs too, because there are people who can do that, who who know who read the source code, and they just say, oh, okay, well, you know, it's like any programming, you know, you just tell it what you want to do. You make up this little mining program, and it comes up with a screen that says, it's what I used to do. I want to know how many rolls of A I did, how many rolls of B I did didn't change the basic the basic fifty thousand dollar software, but we had people who could modify it because Mate Mate didn't want to make do the uh, modifications. But there are people like that out there. Even if this company wanted to charge, let's say they wanted to charge two thousand dollars to put the mining program in, it's well worth it because then you could mine data like you could at Excel. Right. It would well, be worth it. But you're but saying I think that they won't do it like an option. and they won't give you a bill. They well, said they can't do it. They can't. That's what it. they told me, and I spoke to one guy, <laughs> and you know. Okay. I think we need to we we need, we, we to, need find to find the yeah. software that can do what we need, right. much in the same way that you and and I think and we, we shop around and find one that can do what we want and cost it, and not from. go buy it, but cost it and say, these are the benefits of this package versus what we have. These are the types of things we want to be able to get out of it without having to have somebody spend all day printing three pages 
for something, push a button and poof. Well, that's why I'm saying in the meantime, before the next budget cycle, maybe before you're able to do all the research, you can get an intern right now, this semester, with the kind of computer skills um, necessary to be able to spend all those hours yeah, well, mining data. Well, the, but, problem, the yeah. problem with that is that some of this, I think, some of this information may be confidential. We, I mean, we, we did that with an intern, and we had our attorney draft up a confidentiality agreement um, I mean, I know that, I mean, I'm just saying, it's not, it's not impossible, it's not illegal or anything like that. Well, you may not want to do it, but maybe you want to enter for something else, and, and that's and something the Congress printed up. So uh, again, we're, we're only looking into it, and the data that we want mined right now, unless right. the Chief has other ideas, which I don't know, and I'm sure once we have a mining it. program, we can do just about anything. Oh, yeah. no, nothing in there is confidential, there's nothing, this report that the Chief gave us, anybody can go into the thing and say, I'd like to see, uh, well, How many calls were made to District A? Oh, that you, report. Okay. That, that report. But the rest of the system you're happy with, correct? Yeah, the system uh, overall has been good for us. Yeah. I mean, I, I it's don't just, understand It's not giving why, us know. the information breakdown. Basically, what we're looking for is a breakdown of each right. individual officer, not just, okay, there's four of us that went to a call. Yeah. Because right. you may have been there for 10 minutes and you may have been there for three hours. And it doesn't give a breakdown individually. Um, you know, and from, from my end, you know, we've done studies after studies, and we have other folders for calls for service. You know, difference between the village, the town, the breakdown of the of the zones, and we have folders of this stuff. But it never gives the actual answer of one, what individual officer hours are tied up on certain calls at certain locations. And the other thing is that's that's more frustrating is this is nothing new. We've been talking about you know billing and charging differently for years. You probably know that. And the question always comes up, well, can that be done? So I always say that we should find out if it can be done before we spend money to give us the information that doesn't do much different than what we've had before because nobody's going to do it anyway. So I'd like to get a commitment that says, you know, yes, we're willing to pay separately and differently if we have this information. And then we do whatever we have to to create that. If I have to stay up 24 hours and drink a lot of coffee and get that data, I would. But the problem is we get the information that's usually asked for and nothing ever happens with it. Now this is more new with this commission where you're saying, you know, we want a breakdown of individual hours, you know, because so it can be billed. But will that change anything? So before we go crazy and spend a lot of money, I don't mean crazy in a mean way, but before we go the overboard the board has and, already know, voted to look into the BID. And if you're gonna do a BID, you sure need this information. Well, the other thing I just wanna to ask too, even though you purchased the software, I guess you need to make sure there's nothing in that agreement that says somebody else can come in and mine it, or can't come in and mine it, as you call it. I know certain packages we've looked at in other areas, but not here. Right, they consider proprietary. Right. Yeah, you yeah. can't touch it. No, we can't have it. anybody else go into it. It's just they're, lot, like you said, they're the only ones that have the codes to do any of the alterations in, in mining of it. But I mean, the ability to do the, I mean, I think what we're asking for is really rather simple. That's, and yeah. they, you know, in a year and a half's time, they have not come back with any options and now they're just avoiding it. So, I mean, I think we look at, at I'll other I'll look options and see, and what other see what we can get. Software companies are out there and I'll okay. put an email That's out all, to the it, it's, it's, you know, I mean, we got to move forward. I just got very frustrated with this, with this. And code. perhaps they don't call you back. You they don't send an email. All he says is we can't do it. My personal feeling is he's, he, they're working on a new program that they're going to want to sell and they don't want anybody to, to stay with the old program with mm -hmm. it updated. Oh, well, that's okay. Cause if the old program is still working, then you don't need to do it. But I, I do have another question regarding the, um, the company in Georgetown, Texas, that wanted to charge us to mine our own data. But they would have mined it and given the information. Right, the way that it worked, and I mean, and I think the chief and I both agree, what they were able to do was really rather good and useful. But what it was, I think it was, what was it? It was it was 30 some thousand dollars. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was way 30, too much money for that kind of thing. 30,000 annually? I think it was annually. Yeah, right? I think yeah. it was. And what they would do is or, they or would tap into like no, it was initially, and, and then it was yeah, it was not worth that. the money at the time yeah. because so they would we, tap into our system, Retrieve suck our stuff, put it in the format that we basically wanted, put and it we in, couldn't do it, and then 
give it back to us mm -hmm. and 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 then also pinpoint that information on maps so people could say you know where are our problem areas and you know you could go on a map and look at it and poof there it was um, and I mean it was good it was useful information but it was it was it was more than it, it just wasn't it just wasn't worth it I mean we should be able to I mean, it's a database, for God's sake, and all we need to be able to do is push a button and say, I want this and this and this, mm -hmm. and then you spit it out on a piece of paper. It's an Excel spreadsheet. That's, I mean, it's, exactly. it's really that simple. Yeah. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be complicated, and what is troubling to me is that the software company is not willing to figure out a way to make it happen. I think they were struggling with the ability to separate the end times for each officer. They were able to do the total call, but taking it from the information where you put in, the information per officer in their hours, they're unable to do that. And that that's what they were struggling with and they were trying to come up with ideas and apparently it didn't, it didn't work. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Chief, you're up. Sure. Awesome. Sorry, I'm life close. I held have. up at a CPR class. You held up a supermarket? I held up a, <laughs> a CPR class. <laughs> he puts a spin on things? Yes. Uh, we have uh, four commendations uh, for the month. Uh, the first one is from, uh, which we received annually usually this letter, uh, from the Government uh, Traffic Safety Committee, just thanking us for the, our participation in the uh, specific uh, step details and the aggressive driver details. Um, again, just showing appreciation for our uh, continued uh, cooperation and working along with that program. Another letter came from an individual that was staying at a local motel. Uh, the letter is uh, complimenting uh, dispatcher uh, Katie Caputo and uh, Officer Matt Sutton. Uh, the individual experienced some property theft. Uh, he called the station, indicated that uh, dispatcher Caputo was uh, very helpful, very polite and pleasant, and that Officer Sutton arrived uh, in a very quick manner and was very polite at the scene and was just very appreciative of the way the, uh, the case was handled. The next letter is from Chief Dave DeGakin from uh, SUNY uh, PD. Uh, he's just uh, thanking Detective Scott Butler for his assistance in the active shooter training. Uh, the county ESU team assisted and worked with their officers doing an active shooter uh, drill on their campus. And uh, Detective Scott Butler was uh, one of the individuals that assisted in the training. The next letter is uh, to uh, for Sergeant Duke Bunce and Officer Brianne uh, Quigley. Uh, they were handling a disorderly subject on town. Uh, he just wanted to express uh, his appreciation of how the officers handled themselves. He says the situation was handled admirably. Uh, the one officer. Uh, actually was struck in the face by one of the disorderly subjects and he felt that the officers uh, still their demeanor and how they stayed in dealing with the situation was very professional. He also commented on uh, in dealing with other communities and other police departments that our agency, uh, this is an individual that sometimes as we all know there's a lot of videotapes out there in the street, um, individual phone cameras and what have you and he always says that New Paltz officers are always very welcoming to be videotaped, and uh, the one sergeant at the scene actually said that we like it because it helps document and show the professionalism of the officers. So this is a, is a nice letter to get, uh, and very much appreciated. Defensive action, we have one defensive action for the month. Uh, Paint compliance was used on a, a 19 years of age white male, six foot, 185 pounds, <clears throat> large build. Uh, subject was uh, charged with a false impersonation, uh, drinking underage as well. Uh, when the subject was placed into the patrol car without incident, uh, the individual, when was attempted to be seat belted in per our policy, uh, refused and tried to uh, struggle and get out of the vehicle. Uh, the officer at the scene used a uh, paint compliance pressure point, uh, gain compliance. Uh, during that process, the individual did experience some bleeding by his nose due to the type of pressure point that was used. Back at the station, uh, New Plus Rescue Squad checked him out uh, and no transport was needed. 
Okay, thank you, Chief. Anybody else have anything for new business? Okay, so I'd like to entertain a motion to go into executive session, please. I, I, oh. Sorry, I didn't, I don't have new business, but. Oh, okay, um, I, I, was I, did, I was just moving um, along, yeah. No, no, that's, that's okay. <laughs> um, I just realized what you were about to do, and I said, oh, wait. Um, no problem. I, I have questions. Um, in terms of the recent uh, sexual assaults in the community, um, I was hoping to have the Tablet Association meeting. You and I talked about it. Um, I knew you were away. I didn't call you when you got back, but I figured we can start, we can make that happen. And I know it was something, um, when I, when I was on the commission, it was something that we were trying to do at the beginning of every semester. Um, I think it'd be great if we could do, if we could make sure that happens, a tavern owner's meeting. Well, um, they have those once a... Do, do we have, I mean, we generally have them once yeah. a yeah. semester. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're due to yeah. have one, though. Yeah. We are um, due to have one. So I figured, you know, we, we could make sure those happen. Um, I would love to go to it. I guess I could go as a bartender also. Uh, <laughs> see, see how students feel about that. Uh, we now have actual ownership, so I don't have to be there representing them. Anymore. Um, but, uh, but so, you know, it's one of the things that used to go on is Safe Rider. Um, and the bars no longer pay for that. The community, I don't know who used to pay for it, but I think the bars used to pay for it. Um, so I've been thinking about ways. No, uh -oh, there's only taxi services now, That's which you have to pay a considerable amount for, and you have to wait sometimes an hour or more for a taxi. Um, and women end up walking on their own, and uh, you know, regardless of the fact that a lot of them are taught different safety procedures, I also feel that we should be able to walk wherever we want to, whenever we want to. I'm the person who obviously does that. Um, but so I think uh, it'd be really important for us to take. Take, not take this lightly, um, and to get the campus involved as well, because they used to have an escort service, which they also no longer have. Um, they had moved to a walking escort versus a car, because they didn't. They basically were providing a bar shuttle um, for all intents and purposes, because uh, the car would go as far as the, the fire station on Platteville Avenue, and they used to know, because I used to take it, um, and would then you walk into town. Um, but like, you know, that's, there was, people who needed it for real safety measures, and then there were people who were taking it, basically like, oh, it's cold, I don't wanna wear nothing far, let me go out. But, um, you know, there's a ver but really kept people safe, um, was the bottom line. And you can call it and meet it at the fire station as well. So I think there's a couple of different things that maybe we can talk about. Um, and is Robin calling well usually at the tavern? So they, they often, usually, that's yeah, where they yeah, come to, right? Yeah. I don't get confused whether or not it was town gown or that meeting, they come to both, but I think they yeah. come to both, yeah. Um, but they're the people on campus that basically run the, the, the first year initiative and orientation and they talk about the safety in the community and stuff like that. Um, so I think it'd be great if we could all just be really conscious of this. Um, you know, and it's it's really not for a lack of police. Um, there was a, an incident last fall where there were two officers at the corner and then an officer coming around the bend and it just happened in between. You know, it's like, what are you gonna put another person right there? Like, you know, there's not really a way to do it, but we have to think of more um, solutions as opposed to just dealing with these things after they happen. Um, and I thought like maybe there can be a blue light system that the campus installs on what is essentially the bar path. Um, you know, and there's a couple of different ways that students regularly walk to and from campus. So maybe that's something that we could do. Um, but you know, it's not just it's not just females and it's not just students, it's everyone in our community. Boys could be getting mugged as well. Like, you know, I think obviously the girls are a little bit more in danger, uh, but anybody walking on their own late at night, if someone's got an idea, they can do something. So if we could do more of the preventative actions, I know that there's a lot of educational things that do go on and you talked about this at Town Gown yesterday, yes, um, the Refuse to be a Victim program, which I think that that kind of thing sounds great. And if we can try to do some more stuff like that, I would be happy to help. Yeah, now they're supposed to call me tomorrow. Cool. Because they're, uh, they were tied up today to let me know about the grants, because obviously the chief has agreed to assist in it. Okay. The problem is the money. Now, I because, no, because, <laughs> right, because, no, because of the program, yeah. it is, the program is eligible for state for grant. grants. And since most of the stuff is being donated, the only thing that would have to be paid for, unless I, unless I could do a good bunch of talking to these people right. and they donate the books, uh -huh. is to pay for the, you know, the, the little books that, the page that you follow the program with and everything yeah. else. So that, that, that's still moving forward. Cool. And well, I also, I'm I also got a place to do it in case the chief doesn't have the room. I also uh, uh, got a place to hold the program 
Oh, so wonderful. That's being donated. So, you know, that, that's moving forward. I did talk about it, but. Good, yeah. Well, I, I mean, when you talk about it, I thought it was being moved on, so I was yeah. glad to hear that. You brought it up, um, so. For sure. But. Does the college do uh, uh, a, a, any training or anything with, with the students? I mean, I, I know when I went to school, there was, it was, it was, you know, I agree, people should be able to walk wherever they want, but. Of course, common sense always comes into exactly. the into the equation, and then of course there's always personal responsibility. Yep. If you don't feel safe, you shouldn't walk alone. Exactly. That's just common sense. That's not yeah. anything weird or unusual. The question I have is if if you're, you're talking about some path lighting to the to the school and things. So the question I ask is, is the school doing anything to encourage students to create and implement? A buddy system is yeah. the student activities department within the college participating in this process. One hundred percent. Okay. Um, they absolutely are. They, I mean, not only at freshman orientation, they actually separate the boys and the girls, um, and they talk to the girls about, you know, watching out for each other, watching out for yourself, watching out for your drink, um, not going places alone, um, being aware of your surroundings, like you just said, you know, where you. I mean, and this is stuff like I I experienced it, and they confirmed at the meeting yesterday. Um, that they, this is something they're still doing. There was another program that, um, let me see, I have it in my notes. Um, it's called the Step Up Program. Um, and it's part of, it's what's something that SUNY is doing, and I know, and they said that, uh, I think that it goes on in schools in general, um, but that, that part of it is the idea of, oh God, what, do you remember exactly what it was? I walked in when he was talking Yeah, no, about it. Uh, what, the, what they're looking to implement, which by the way, they have in the middle school, according to uh, Ms. Rice, uh, if you see something, say something. It's basically what it is. If you see something, right, it's cool, yes. step up, and you know, it, you, you know, you don't have to necessarily get involved, but you should get yourself yeah. involved if you can. And that's or one of the things. Or running, you know, pick up your cell phone, phone and call the police, exactly. or something like that. That's what the step up pro. Again, it's an awareness program, like refuse to be a victim yeah. and rad. Well, RAD, Rad is more, Rad well, is Rad, more Rad of a defensive is a, program. Rad is a, you know, a defense program. It's a defensive to program. Right. How to actually self-defense. Right. But they also give that on the campus and have for years. But um, I wanted to say the, the Step Up program, that's exactly what they have been telling the boys, is the idea of if your friends are saying or doing something, I mean, a lot of this is very, very specific to sexual assault. Um, but if you have friends who are you know, saying things or doing things, Say something to them and tell them that's not cool, that's not right. Um, step up and be the one to walk somebody home and you know say exactly, something yep. to somebody about not behaving a certain way. Um, so and they definitely do that with the with the freshmen at orientation, um, and it's and it's talked about with the RA staff. I was an RA on campus, so that's something that they promote there as well. Um, but I don't I don't know what more they can do. I mean, when I think of the lighting system, it's a uh, the blue lights where basically there's phones and there's a blue light on top of the phone and if you're being chased by somebody you go and you take that phone off the hook and then you want to take the next one off the hook as you're running down path and then the police know where you are and they can find you because once that phone goes off the hook it notifies the campus UPD um, about that and so, so I mean and I don't know how well that system works I mean the part of what we talk about is have a blue light in your pocket. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was, I was, I was, yeah. I was, I was, I was going to ask that's, that that's a more old school question thing before cell phones mm -hmm. um, But you know, I don't know if that's something that would help on that bar path or not. I mean, I don't know, maybe Sally would wouldn't mind us putting one in her yard. <laughs> Wait, you, you know, Ariana, it's when you talk about like with the phones. As a senior citizen, my phone is no, my phone has two tunes in it. Yeah. When I push one button, I'm connected automatically, so I don't have to go fumble, I don't have to push buttons. Yeah. I just push one button, and I'm either, depending upon what it is, I'll either be hooked up immediately to New Pulse or 9-11. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that everybody on well, campus both, both should, built should put them in that. Built that way, I can. I have a password to mine, but on the bu there's a button right below it that says emergency. Oh, mine, mine doesn't so have it because I, I have one I, of the so older phones. You can call emergency without putting. Emergency. That, that exactly. That, yeah. that, that every student in their cell phone should have that, along with their 12 boyfriends or six girlfriends. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's um. That's definitely oh, okay, the yeah. truth of it. But you know, and and so when I say like, what do we do? Part of it is education. Mm -hmm. Um. You know. Part Part of it is just 
you know, reaching out to the campus and finding out more about what they're doing, like your questions, and you know, seeing how we can collaborate, or maybe we have ideas that they hadn't thought of, also, you know. Oh, absolutely. So, um, and I figured this is the place where I should talk about this. <laughs> and and the the campus police are participating in this as well, or uh, should I mean, are are you reaching out to the campus police to to? participate in this? They, if they're not, the people you should. who would, I mean, they, essentially, if we were going to install this blue light system, they would be a part of that, and the campus would be the, the people who would, I mean, in my mind, pay for it. Um, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, no more calls. But we have a winner. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. all the same way. No um, more calls. We have a winner. But yeah, I, it actually, you know, that's interesting that you say that, because how I met the chief and got involved in the police commission was the Women's Safety Alliance. Um, we're actually the Women's Safety Alliance Task Force. We're an alliance and a task force. Um, but it was all these women who, in response to um, sexual, a sexual, couple sexual assaults in September of 09, I think it was. Jeez, it's long ago. Um, not that long, I guess, in relative terms. But um, <laughs> for me, that's long ago. Um, yeah. It's before I was really involved in things. But um, that, that was the response to it, where all these students and community members coming together. And we met with the campus chief and, and Joe Snyder here. Um, that's how I met him and I got involved in things. So I know that there are people who care about this stuff. So maybe that's something that I should look into what those students are doing, uh, because they would, they would be the ones, really, um, who should be putting the pressure on the campus, not us on the outside. I'm yeah. happy to work with them. But yeah. um, I mean, and that's, and, and, I, and, I, that's and I think that's, you know, and I, and I, and you know, my question is not an effort to diminish what you're saying because oh, I, I think, think what you're is. saying is is extremely important. But I go back I to it's it's, for both it's, police it's forces you know to both both police forces should be aware, and it shouldn't it shouldn't fall solely on the taxpayers of New Paltz to make sure that and 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 when they are in our jurisdiction, we take care of them like we take care of everybody else. But you know, I personally have a problem for you know being the, the, the babysitter for, for college students and the college not taking any responsibility for it or the, the campus police I totally, not I totally coming agree. off that yeah. campus and, and, and taking care of and their charges. And they are not supposed to now, I'm sure you're aware of yeah, the, well. the union contract. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And that, But that's also part of why, and I'll bring it up again, interns, um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do with the college campus um, that, you know, we can get I, want, I don't want to say free labor, but essentially <laughs> that's what it is. And they get meaningful learning experiences and college credit, and they make connections within the community. I mean, I'm hosting two internships right now, and I think that this is an invaluable resource um, because these kids have skills that we don't necessarily have the time for or the skills. I mean, I certainly don't know the computer program that these people do know. Um, and so things like that um, are ways where we can help to balance the exchange as well. because. Regardless, we are paying for it. You know, well, that's the bottom line. We're paying we, for it. We, we wouldn't need the kind of police force that we have. But, but looking, it. looking, looking at the school, I mean, is is there not a way for them to implement within their organization and the student activities office a buddy system that is designed for that purpose, where you have volunteers, another word for intern, <laughs> who come together. Yeah. You have you have a bunch of guys, you know. Maybe maybe you have the fraternities. One fraternity a weekend is responsible for escorting the the the, the ladies, or you know, being. Yeah. Be, I mean, I'm just I'm trying I to come up with ideas. with, so with is, an idea for here. something, and um, it doesn't yeah, necessarily have to be a fraternity. It could it could be yeah. the fraternity and the sororities could take turns doing this. Somebody, yeah. in, you know, I mean, it's. I mean, the campus used to have more of an escort system. I don't know what happened to it, but it went from a car to a walking system. And they paid these students to do this. Um, this was, these were paid positions, so there should be no reason why it can't exist. Um, and certainly, I mean, I had male friends who were all about helping out that way and walking people home. And so I, I think, yeah, I mean, and not, not like boyfriends either, like just guys who are good guys, and I think that they would sign up for that kind of thing. Um, as a volunteer program, so I'll bring that to the campus. And are are they usually these situ? I mean, you're they're the this these rides are from going out eating in the the, the restaurants and things in the town and things of that 
Wait, what, what is it? When they, the rides that used to exist, was oh, that? Oh, Safe Rider. Yeah, the Safe um, Rider, was that from the, Florida, from, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, that was the from the restaurants and things in town? I'm pretty from, sure from it the, wasn't even the restaurants, I'm pretty sure it was just the bars. Just um, the bars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure. So let me ask this question. If you're out at a bar and you're drinking, you're spending money, and you're going back to campus, how much more expensive could it be to take a cab from a bar if you're already out it's drinking? It's at least $5. And a drink in the bar but is? The weight, <laughs> the weight is the biggest thing. Okay, but the um, drink in the bar is how oh, much? Yeah, Four fifty, five dollars. So, if you and the cabs are sitting outside, I know, but so the bottom line is that the cabs aren't sitting outside; they're driving people. Um, and you're and I'm calling cabs, and they're telling me it's going to be an hour before we can come pick this person up. Sorry. And so, you know, I'm I'm like the person calling cabs for my customers. Um, so I I know they're not. You know, people aren't. Did they take a cab up. to the bar? Can they take a cab did, to no, the did bar? they take a cab to the bar? I, I don't I mean I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm just I'm just trying to, to, to get a sense as well, to a lot of people will a lot of people, a lot of people walk to town. Community. A lot of people walk to town and you know and they'll want to take a cab home at night, later at night. Mm -hmm. um, when Safe Rider was in place, uh, only a few of the bars participated in a program. Some of the issue was that other bars were sending people didn't want to pay, were saying we'll go down the block, <laughs> right. get on there. So there's some controversy on that. But the other issue was I think Safe Rider was actually sold to the person that had the cab company. Yeah. And did away with so that. So are we talking resident? I mean, are we talking rides to the school cabs. residents? Or if I'm out and What's I need on? a cab home, I, I mean, and I needed a Safe Ride, I Safe Rider I, was for everybody. Okay, so it was wasn't for just for students. In the bars. It was not just for students. Okay. Which is why I think, uh, you know, having Safe Rider as well as the campus reinstating its escort service would be a way for, you know, it to be covered on all ends. Chief of And maybe when you, you know, you talk about this business improvement district, and I know Susan sent us this uh, whole thing about what it would take to, to form one, um, you know, I've thought about how. Safe Rider could be some, some kind of product of that. Absolutely. Um, it, it come. It falls under. If you would, looked at what the bid they would, they would covers, it would fall the under the bid. Be to. Exactly. Yeah, they're deriving revenue from it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Chief, can I just make a and suggestion then, yes. that um, the next time you have the uh, tavern owners meeting, that you uh, send an email to Ariana. Yes. Yep. All right, Ariana. The chief will invite you to the next bar meeting so that you're there. I, we oh, just cool. Thank it. you. Because I think you should be. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else before we move on? No, thanks, for, thanks uh, for talking about that. No, it's a good point. No, it's very, very good point. Good point. Good point. Well, session, shall we have any discussion briefly at all about the status of the department with manpower and lieutenant's position? And I don't see the or, point. No. I mean, if you want, Chief, that's fine, but it's all up in the air. So, well, you know, we're, we're kind of spinning wheels at this point. So, you know, we have to wait which is what I said. Yes, we have to wait until the town board decides how they want to do it, what they want to do it, how they want to fund it. We have, you made your submission and your recommendations to the town board. Now, there's really nothing we can do for next year until the town board comes back and says, okay, guys, you have $2 million or you have a million dollars or you got $5 million and we can see how we're going to fund. I mean, I, I don't want to go forward and, and make all kinds of things and, and find out that, you know, we do, we, we've done all of this like we did with the other things, and we're not getting anywhere unless anybody has any other... No, I... I, I mean, I, I don't see the point in... So I understand what you want, want Chief, but I just don't understand the point. But on one that. of the things that I think of is that... So you have, so there's no, there's no guidance, so... See, one of the things that I just feel is that, you know, because it's not being discussed, as a commission and the importance of operations of our department, we should at least still stay on them to, you know, request them to please consider putting this on the agenda again and keep discussing it. You know, don't just say, well, we discussed it, we're not going to talk about it for three months. I'm not saying that's what you're going to do. <laughs> I'm not saying. It. I'm not saying I'm not thinking. It. I'm not saying. It. And I would just like to make sure that it is important. My desk is stacked. I'm missing meetings because I can't make them. Um, and you know, unfortunately, the effects of the department are really feeling it. And you know, tonight we're going to you know do some interviews for because we, we're down to 18, 19 or eighteen people right now. Um, we're hurting. We're hurting. Yeah. And it's going to take time to get people that are new hires up to speed with training. Um, you know, so 
again, it, it's not something that we can just sit there and say, all right, we mentioned it to them. Now, if they take three months, six months, or 10 months to get back to us, I don't think that would be acceptable, from my opinion, from the commission. I think we should let them know we're still out here, let them know that we're still hoping to get this uh, to continue and continue conversation and discussion. In it. Is it on the, the agenda, chief, Gene? The chief, chief the um, commission has happened. spoken yeah, to them. And it's, you know, so. we've had a meeting, we've had two meetings and three meetings, and um, there's nothing more that the commission can do other than what we're doing, Chief. I mean, it's not like we can walk around with picket signs or this kind of stuff. Well, you could. <laughs> <laughs> but Gene thinks it is, it might be. Do you really? <laughs> Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're no, all I'm asking is just let's keep the conversation going. Oh, I, I understand yeah, there's I only agree. so much we can the do as a commission as well. The conversation will keep going. Um, it's just that there's more involved than just making a simple decision. Okay, that's, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think I probably speak for the chief and maybe others, but, and I understand that. The thing that I think is important that when you go back to the, the board is that there are a number of things that are being held in abeyance as a result of, of the uncertainty. So, you know, there are things that we have to do and pe bodies we have to move because of the contract and then there are things, you know, so we're, we're so it's, it's just a function of, of making sure that he has a sense that there's gonna be a conclusion sooner <laughs> rather than later so that he can start planning ahead and putting bodies where they, I mean, live bodies, <laughs> <laughs> where they need to, to be. Okay, anything no, else? I just want to mention, I, just want, I don't know if it has been, but I think when the Chief was away on vacation, I really think we should put a shout out to Sergeant McCasey. Where he really stepped up where he was really filling the role as a Chief, Lieutenant, in charge of the detective division without another detective there, and we had two major crimes, that re two major investigations that had to go on, plus everything else was falling on him, and he didn't, you know, really had that. I mean, there's no way he can keep that, you know, it would be impossible. I really just have to say that I, you know, I'm impressed that he really didn't complain about it, just did what he had to do, and really, I think it shows the, the great men and women we have in our department. Thanks. Anything else? Fine. Somebody make a motion that we can go into executive session, please, for the I purpose of. <laughs> you have to read it. I got to read it, it right. <laughs> uh, the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.